Hey there, and thanks for being here for Adobe Max. I'm Karina Anglada, and I am so excited to walk through today's topic, which is social media content creation in the world of AI. This session is relatively brief, but my hope is to keep things practical, easy to follow, and most importantly, useful for you and some of your social video workflows. Throughout this session, we're gonna walk through four different things. First, we're gonna walk through some useful editing tactics working with social video in Premiere Pro. Then we'll add some custom video elements using Firefly, which is Adobe's generative AI model. Then we'll use a brand new generative AI feature in Premiere Pro called Generative Extend. And finally, we're gonna learn about content credentials and why it's helpful to use them in social video content. So get comfortable, grab your favorite beverage if you haven't already, and let's dive right in. We're gonna start in Premiere Pro where I'm working on this short social video edit. Now, I've always been inspired by the strength, dedication, and unity of the Olympics. So I was working on a video tribute of sort, sorts to honor some of my favorite athletes and the spirit of the games. Now, transitions are a great way to elevate your content for social media, so I quickly want to break down what I've done with this edit so far. If I click F, I'll bring up the source media on my first clip here. And here, we can see that I start the clip and set an in and out in point there. But where I set my out point is when the flag is completely covering the camera all the way. So that's the end of my first clip on my timeline that you can see right about there. But if I clip my second clip here and use the F key, which is my shortcut to pull up the source media, I start the video and marked an endpoint where the flag is fully covering me. And you'll see I made that same motion to make that transition look really seamless. So when I play it back together, you can see I cheated it so it looks like it was all one shot and all of a sudden I'm in a different outfit. Now this video is pretty cool, but it feels a little bit bland without any sound design. So for the sake of time, I added some elements already, but I just want to mention that in the essential sound panel, there are Adobe stock music assets, but also free sound effects that you can use. So there's lots of different categories. You can filter for the free options. And I actually found some really cool wrestling crowd sound design that was awesome and worked exactly with what I was going for. So let's take a listen to one of the examples here that I found. Now, I love this because it sounds like I'm in an arena, sounds like there's lots of people there. So I went ahead and added that to A3. But I also wanted to really emphasize that whoosh, that sound effect of the transition. And so I found this power beam, almost like a sci-fi kind of sound effect, but it ended up working perfectly with my transition here. So let's take a listen to that. So when I paired those together with the transition that I edited, now we see that the piece is really coming to life. But I'm still missing something. And generally, I'd be super happy with the, this edit. But I know there's just a few pieces missing because the athletes that I featured both of them ended up winning gold, so I want to emphasize that. Now, the first element I want to create is maybe something to indicate a splash, so something to go with this transition here. And I want to create a custom transition that indicates a splash. I also want to make an end card of sorts that says something like going for gold. So I'm going to use Adobe Firefly to help me create both. So I'm here at Adobe Firefly, the homepage, so firefly.adobe.com, where I'm going to start my process by creating still images and using them as reference images to turn into video elements. So we're going to start with the video transition idea I had. So 
In this prompt bar, I'm gonna type in blue and red watercolor on bright green paper with texture, a border, some colors on opposite sides, and we're gonna do some selective focus for design or wrapping purpose. And we'll get to why I decided to put that in my prompt in a second. I'll hit generate, it's gonna take me to a new tab where here I get four different outputs. Now this was pretty cool, it reminds me of Paris and the French flag, but I really like this example here. Now the reason I said bright green paper is I'm gonna use this as a foundation to then later key out my video. And I also chose selective focus in my prompt so that there was something in the middle to work with. So from here, I can click edit, then hit generate video to use this as a reference image. And then it gives me a new tab where I can type in a new prompt, this time for video. And I've also got my general settings on the side here so I can set my aspect ratio for nine by 16 for vertical. I've also got these cool motion controls, but I'm gonna type in my prompt, which in this case is red and blue watercolors very quickly splash into one another from opposite ends and explode into small water-like droplets in the middle revealing a plain green screen. Now you'll see it added that image that we just created into this little frame holder. And when I click generate, it's going to process and this is the output that we see. So it accurately interpreted my prompt really well. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs up and give some feedback to the Adobe Teams and hit submit and then click download and save that video. So that's my custom video transition. It's looking awesome. But I also want to create that end card. So this time I'm actually gonna use something called start and end frames by using two images this time. So just like I did before with the original image, I'm going to use an image prompt and I'm going to use the prompt, the words going for gold written in gold metallic paint on cerulean blue plain background made of water. Now with text effects, you got to be careful. Um, there's some different outputs here. This one's going for good. Maybe not want to use that one, but I love this going for gold option. So again, I can give it a like, give some good feedback. I can also save it to my favorites, but I'm gonna download this and use it as the starting frame of the video that I'm trying to create. And from here, I'm also gonna create a second image, again, using a very simple prompt, this time a teal blue plain background made of paper, again, doing this for the sake of time. And from here, I'll click download to save this as my second end frame. And in Adobe Firefly for video, I can drop in that first image here into this frame holder and that second plain water background into the second one and add in my prompt for video. In this case, the prompt is slow zoom in of a wave of water from top to bottom washes over the words going for gold that disappear underneath the water and reveal the plain water background. I'll hit generate, it'll process, and again, this is the output that we got. I love this example here. I feel like it really accurately interpreted what I was saying, which was I was being very explicit in my prompt here. And from here, I can hit download and bring these assets into my video. So we'll jump back here into Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna take a look at my media folder where I went ahead and dropped in these Firefly video assets. Here we see this going for gold end card and the custom video transition. So we're gonna bring this edit to life. So with this custom transition, I'm gonna mark my in and out points here, and then I'm just gonna add it to my timeline. And from here, we're going to key out this green screen background. So under effects, I can type in key and we're gonna use the ultra key effect and drop it onto our clip. From here under effects controls, we're gonna use that eyedropper tool to select the green and we're gonna clean up the key ever so slightly. So we're going to drop down the shadow 
and maybe bring up the pedestal. And from here, maybe we'll add some dissolves to the start and end of this clip. And for the beginning, we'll keep it a really, really short, tight dissolve. And for the end, maybe something just a little bit longer. So let's take a look now. And wow, that's actually looking pretty good. Very different than before, but I think it's giving that splash element that I was going for. So I love this. Now, the second thing that I want to do is I want to add that end card that we created. So I'll again drop this into my timeline and I'm actually going to start the, the edit right where the water starts creeping in at the top. Now, Firefly video outputs only five seconds of video, so it's a relatively brief clip. So I'm going to add this to my timeline. And here, maybe we can add in another dissolve, just like we did before, um, to the front of the clip. Let's grab that, add that there. And maybe we'll dissolve it, keep it a little bit shorter here. And what's great about this is it's looking cool, but I need a little extra time. I want the water ripples to continue and continue with this crowd noise that I have. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean on something called Generative Extend. Now, this is a tool that is brand new inside of Premiere Pro, and it lets us generate new frames of video content up to two seconds and up to 10 seconds for audio. So two seconds for video content and 10 seconds for audio. So things like natural sound or capturing room tone. Generative Extend is the first application of generative AI for video editors. And I'm so excited because at the time of this recording, the team recently added vertical video support like this extended 9 by 16 clip. Now, there are some limitations around extending certain types of media, but the team is working hard to expand all different types of media. So while that's working in the background, we can speed forward and I want to add a few things like that cross dissolve. And I'm also going to add another sound effect for that splash element. So I'm gonna type in giant splash and we're gonna see what sound effects it gives us. And I'm just gonna add this here. We can add that, maybe add a cut, we'll add some fades. Now you see it's working in the background. But again, for the sake of time, for the purpose of this demo, I have a version that's already generated. So we're gonna jump to it really quickly here. So. In this second sequence that we've got ready, you can see that it shows where the generation and where it extended that media. So this black AI generated bar, I can right click it and click generate again if I don't like the output or revert it back to the original. And I can also give feedback for poor or some good output back to the Adobe Teams. Now let's take a look and see how it did here. So I'm gonna mute this just so we can focus on the video. And again, coming up here, those frames didn't exist before and it's looking awesome. It's looking amazing. And it did such a good job of continuing that movement. Generative Extend is absolutely phenomenal. Now let's play the video back in its full entirety with Sounddesign, with our Gen AI assets. Let's see how it sounds. So that's way better. I love the message that I intended was there. Now we've got that splash effect and that going for gold is really, really making this piece come to life. Now, I wanna call out something about Generative Extend. Now, we're never training on your, on your content. So your media is never used to train Adobe's AI model. It's only used to create the requested extension. So it ensures that your content remains private and under your control. Which reminds me, if I look at my media inside of the assets that we generated in Firefly, you'll notice there's two little icons that say CR. Those are content credentials, and it's a visual indicator showing that the content credentials are in these assets with Firefly. So what exactly are they? 
Content credentials are a new way to help people understand where digital content comes from and how it's been edited or created. So for social media, this means giving users more context about a particular asset. So things like who made it, when and what tools were used. And really, it's a step towards combating misinformation and it provides transparency right at the source. Really, you can think of it like a digital nutrition label, which helps users trust what you see online. So now that we've edited this full video, I'm actually going to go to my export panel inside of Premiere Pro, and there's an option for me to export with content credentials. So I can write in content credentials into the exported file if there's any source material in the export that has content credentials, which it does. So here you can see that the content credentials have been applied. And once you check this box, a small information piece of information is added to the output. And if you click this little icon, you can learn even more about how content credentials work and how they're supported when you upload to a site that supports that metadata. So that brings us to the end of our session. We've learned so much, and I am so grateful to each of you for joining in and learning alongside me. I hope the information shared in this session today sparked some new ideas and offered some clarity on social video content creation in the world of AI. So keep on creating and enjoy the rest of Adobe Max. Take care.